Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a fully functional input field right on Figma without using any plugins, just using the interactive components feature, which is in the beta version released by Figma. So you can actually type in any character from your keyboard. So that's really amazing. But yeah, it has got a couple of drawbacks like you can't use the backspace and all, but you'll be really amazed at what is possible right now. So it took me a couple of hours to crack this logic, but it's finally done. So I thought, why not I just make a quick video on this and share this with you guys. So without any further ado, let's see how this works. So as you can see here I have the name field so once I tap on this you can have the blinking cursor and then I can just type in my channel's name right here there you go and if you have noticed you can type in capital letters and small letters as well so coming to age let's say the age of this channel it's around three or four months so let's go for four months and there you go you can type in numeric and also the space bar so that's really cool so coming to the email address which is design extreme at gmail.com there you go, you have special characters, dot, all that stuff. And then coming to phone number, which is 999-999-999-999. Just kidding, that's not my number. But as you can see, numeric and everything works. So that's really cool, right? And yeah, it has got a couple of drawbacks, like you can't use the backspace and you got to use a mono space font and all that. But overall, you can see how powerful the interactive components feature is. Just a quick update here, I'm able to use a backspace, but it's not working as we usually expect it to work. So let me just quickly show you that. So if I enter in hello or something like that, and I use a backspace, it basically deletes from the left to the right instead of the other way around. So that is the only flaw in the backspace. But if you guys find a logic to fix this, do let me know in the comments below. And as usual, the link for this file is there in the description below, so you can go ahead and try it out. So in this video, I'm not gonna go through the whole process of creating this project from scratch because it's gonna be really a repetitive process. Uh, you know, the linking of the interactions are really repetitive. So it's gonna be boring for you as well as for me. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly run through the file and show you how I achieved this. So here is the file and as you can see this whole thing is done using these three main interactive components so the first thing is a single character frame and then you have the input field and then you have a blinking cursor so this one is the main uh, input field that you see so this is the main component and these two are supporting components we can say so i'll just explain these two first and then we'll move on to this one so this one is the very basic one which is a blinking cursor and its purpose is just to show that blinking cursor that you saw after each uh, character so that is done basically using two variants which is cursor off and cursor on which is nothing but just a line which is uh, opacity 100 and 0 so it just keeps looping between these two and that is how you achieve the blinking cursor effect and then you have this one which is a single character frame so this small component is the component that uh, you know basically accepts each and every character so we'll be placing this n number of times of how many characters ever you want and if i go to the prototype mode of this one you can see there are a hell lot of interactions so in this itself uh, if i can see here so you can type in any of these characters and there are around let me see yeah 78 characters in total so including small letters and capital letters numbers special characters so everything included we have around 78 characters that you can input so what i'm doing here is i'm just linking this empty frame to each and every character so let me just open you one interaction and show you so on key press of z i just uh, change this uh, frame to the z alphabet which i've given somewhere here so that same interaction is being repeated for each and every character that you see here so whenever you're using this component anywhere on your frame and you press any of these characters it just changes to that particular character and that that is how I've used this one multiple times on this frame, which is nothing but the input field. So we have two states in this one is the default state and this is the active state. So in the default state, all you have is a key field, which is nothing but the placeholder. Then you have the value field, which is turned off. You don't want it when you're showing the placeholder. And then you have the box, which is nothing but the fill and the stroke. So in the active field, what I've done is I've turned off the placeholder and the value box is turned on. So here is the magic. So inside this value box or the group that you see here, we have multiple components which is nothing but this empty frame so initially when you're jumping to the active state whenever you type any character so you're at this position so let's say you typed a you just uh, swap this one or change this one with this particular character or frame so that is how you get the alphabet a here and then you jump to the next one because this one is completed then you jump to this one which again change to c or d whatever you type and so on you just keep entering each and every character to the complete limit here so in this total box i was able to fit 
it in 26 characters so you can type in 26 characters and after you entered a character it just keeps blinking so how you end it is using an enter key so that is what I assigned so if I click on this and go to prototype so here you have this one which says on press of enter you go to the completed state which is nothing but a blank uh, you know frame that I've kept here which basically tries to simulate that you have finished entering on that particular field and that is how you end it so that is the overall interactions that you have to create in order to achieve this input field and finally all you got to do is just go to assets and you just drag your component and place it on the frame where you want it duplicate as many instances of that as you want and all you got to change is just the placeholder to whatever you want and that's it for this video guys if you found this fun and informative make sure that you share this with your friends and also don't forget to press on the subscribe and the bell notification if you want to get notified about such fun and informative videos thanks for watching